super fun one too. It's badass. Look how ridiculous it is. Yeah, but it's actually, you know, it's everything's there to make sure it Guns. looks like. Yeah, it's a cowboy. The hands are always I mean? my favorite. They're it's circles. Just, yeah, exactly. I even like, there was like a little toe at the bottom of the one. Yeah. There was just like a little bit of yeah. one. I don't know if that was there. You got two kids, you said? Yeah. All right, let's turn, uh, yeah, let's turn it. You can scoop back just like a little bit. Cool. All right, let's put this stencil on. And we'll... Let's take it on there. Joel Gillespie, age six, art, right? Almost I, uh, I've told both my kids, I'm like, all right, you know, when you get to a certain age, you guys have to, daddy. Like, oh, yeah, don't forget that toe. I know, the toe is the best. There he is. There he is. Um, I'm like, dude, when you get to a certain age, and now it's like, I keep telling my daughter, I'm like, dude, like, when are you going to tattoo me? She's like, ah, I don't want to do that. Like, I'm going to mess it up. I'm like, that's the point of tattoos like this. My kid, like, my kid, I always ask him, like, you want tattoos, buddy? You know? Like, I want him to be like, I want to get tattooed like dad. He yeah. doesn't want tattoos at I think, all. I think that's the next generation. Because yeah, we're like, like the generation that has all of it. Yeah. And then every generation rebels. So like, yeah, he's the like, next one, yeah, my, my son's like, eh, not really. He goes, I don't want snakes and crap on me, is what he said. Like, snakes and crap sound awesome. <laughs> I was gonna say, that sounds fucking sick, Yeah, dude. it sounds great. I'll, <laughs> I'll set that up now, like. <laughs> I'll even pay for you to go to sleep like at the dentist and wake up with it, you know? <laughs> it's like when people do their like their dogs and their cats, it like bugs me out so bad. It's so dark. I'm like, it's so, yeah, it's like That's dark. so dark. Uh, I saw one where it was a guy had a sphinx and he, had the vet put it to sleep, and they were doing like something else. And he's like, "Oh, my tattooer's gonna come in and do." And he did like carpe diem, and he spelled it wrong, because he has it on him, and it was also wrongly what spelled. A so there's a picture of him with his sphinx, and it's both of them is wrong, and spelled completely I wrong. A, I have a friend, well, an acquaintance that used to drive on Warp Tour, and he had this little hairless chihuahua, and had flames down the sides, and I always felt so bad when I saw it. I was like, dude, that's so dark. Were they good flames at yeah, least? Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's still not good. It's still dark. But it would have been worse if it was like, it looked like it was done at like a meth house or something, you know? Yeah. Oh, that's a thing now, by the way. It's like young kids getting really shitty tattoos on like on their neck and face. Oh, yeah. Because they don't do them in shops. It's called SoundCloud. <laughs> it's, 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 dude, it's that. There's a kid on the tour we're on right now. He works for one of the opening bands. His first tattoo ever was a butterfly on his face. Never had any more. I was like, who did that for him, dude? They all do that. They all do it at home. They don't go to it. They don't do what we do, where you yeah. like, you go look at some, like, I'm really into great, you know, dope ass flash. Like, that's yeah. my thing. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Everybody has like a thing that they like. Yeah, you know? I go look at old Taylor Jerry books. That's what I like. Yeah, you know, totally. Like that shit you got have, guys have up there is crazy. Yeah. yeah, the original. So, yeah, so I go look at that stuff and then I'll like call my friends who have spent all their money on opening an amazing shop. They're our age, you know. But the kids these days just like, Dudes yeah. come to their house and like tat through their face. It's more about having it than having a good one of it. It's just, it, it's cred. It, it's like street cred. It's a de the, the generational thing, right? So, like, yeah, you and I would man. never do that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Never. Ever? No. Like, so it, it's just super weird. I think I was like 16. I was like, at like the punk scene, and all my friends were skaters and stuff, and I skated a lot. And one of them got like their creepy uncle that just got out, you know, of prison, had a machine, and they were like, oh, he's gonna give it to us. We're gonna tattoo each other. You wanna come over? And I'm like, I don't know, it doesn't sound do something. No, they came in the next day, and they had, do you remember the Etnies Devil? <gasps> One of them did the Etnies Devil, and the other one did the Spitfire logo. Now, those logos, they look kind of loose. They're kind of like this. They're kind of like, yeah. you know, so if you do them bad, they're still what they are. So I was like, ah, oh, maybe I should, I should get like an octopus on my stomach or something. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to wait. Just, just something in the back of my head was like, I'm going to wait. I hadn't even really seen good tattoos yet, other than like on a headbanger's ball on like Ricky Rackman. Like, that was all. Because I was in like Virginia where there was like nothing. Hell yeah. So like, I was like, shoot out. And then they kept doing it. So then they just kept showing up with more, kind of like you're saying, they're just friends and they're just working yeah. on each other. And they were like, oh, you can do a couple of them. I'm like, I'm, that machine looks like it breeds hepatitis. I don't like any Dude, part of that. Dude, SoundCloud rappers now, and like even like, like Post Malone and big guys like that, they, um, they all get tattooed at home. Yeah. Dudes like random ass dudes come over and tattoo these guys and it looks fucking crazy. Yeah. Like, have you, seen tattoos? Have you seen Post Malone? Have you seen tattoos on his yeah. face? How they're all falling out and shit? Yeah. I'm like, that's on your face. 
Yeah. Yeah. Things you could have done it good. But he recently went to Japan, and there's this guy named. Uh, the, well, his Instagram is Bang Gong. Gong. That shit's That's tight. tight as fuck. It's super tight. I would tight. get that tattoo. I was mad that he got it because I was like, man, I should have, I should have done that. Should have done that. Done, but I don't want to shave my head yet. Dude, the head, it's like, I, I got the whole side of my head done a couple months ago, and I picked a guy that I'd worked for for a long time, a friend, and uh, I thought, I got everything else. It's not going to be that bad. Yeah. You know, it's going to suck, but it's not going to be that bad. Mm -hmm. He lays the first line in, and I was like, oh, oh no, this is twice as bad as I thought it was going to be. And, it just, and I had to like lay my head down like this. And he just kind of was just, he's like heavy handed old school guy. So he's just like burying the lines in me. And he doesn't even do like the line work break and then we're gonna color. Cause I'm like, I'm like, when is this gonna stop? He's like, oh, I'm already shading. I'm like, well, can you just give me a minute? Can I get up and back teen or something? He's like, all right, fine. And in my mind, I was like, I am gonna Irish goodbye this guy. I'm gonna- You're gonna leave half done. I was gonna say, you know what? I'm gonna get a soda across the street. Do you want anything? And then he'd never seen me again. And then I'd call him up years later, like, can you, can you finish this? But it, it was oh. so bad. And then I'm like thinking, like, maybe, I, maybe I'll make two sessions out of this. Like, maybe we don't do this in one session. Oh. He's like, no. He goes, I'm sorry it's taken so long. Every time I put the needles to your head, blood goes everywhere. And I'm like, that's not what I wanna hear <laughs> at the point of me being in just horrible pain. So I told him I wanted the other side of my head done, and uh, every time he comes into town, I just hope he doesn't contact me. Oh. I'm just like, I hope this doesn't happen. Oh. All right, so. Let's get to the fun part of you this. You wanna tattoo this bitch? Yeah, let's do this. Let's, let's start with some awesome guns. <laughs> They're just <laughs> great though. You know what? It's hard as an artist to like do something and people look at it and not go, "What is that?" You know what that is when you look at there it. Are guns. Yeah. Like th that's, those are guns. That's it's, a happy cowboy it's too. It's my He's favorite very thing. Happy. He's very very happy. Look how cool he is. All right. I like how we, how big we decided to do it too. Uh, yeah, I was thinking like you were gonna maybe do it smaller in between some stuff because I was like assuming well, no, that dude. you had work already and we were gonna kind of work around it. So, uh, but then you were like, oh, this size? I'm like, oh, yes. I'm, I'm so covered everywhere else but my legs. This is, I never wear shorts, so I never get leg tattooed. I'm trying to now. But I, I can see from your very festive shorts today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is all I have, so. I wish every tattoo was like, felt like this, or on your arms, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. Where you totally. can have a conversation and hang out. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty light-handed as, as it goes. You are very light-handed. You know, like, as that goes, like, uh, I've been doing this for, like, over 20 years, and I just feel like I do, like, a lot of large-scale stuff, and, like, if you really lay into somebody, like, they're doing a back piece, like, you already know, if you give them, like, one session that's really rough, you don't see them for a while. No. But if you give them, like, an easy one, and then you tackle, like, the hard stuff later, it, it definitely makes people want to come back and, and finish stuff. That's funny, because... It's so true because the guys that tattoo me are, they do all this flashy old school shit and they are. They're probably heavy handed too because that's just kind of what it is. Dude, bold will hold, right? I mean, those dudes kill will kill you. But that's why I haven't. That's why I can't finish my back. It's it's it hurts the back so bad. I've got a I've got a whole like back piece that's like my ass and the back of my thighs and everything. Japanese piece. Yeah, big yeah. Japanese piece. And um, the guy that did it, he uh. He outlined me for seven and a half hours the first session. And you didn't he go back started, for two years. He started in my right ass cheek in the middle. Do you have anything on your ass? No. It's the worst place on the Is body. It really? You think it's like, ah, this will be it. It's it's fucking horrible. And so yeah, I have to say the bottom of the cheeks, the back of the legs are pretty bad. Your well, ass your ass is that bad, huh? It's yeah. worse than you know what it is? The back of the legs, like that whole area. Oh. That, that part where your ass turns into the back of your thigh, that little crease where your butt hangs over. Yeah. That's just horrible. And he started the first line in this whole session right there. And I felt my cheeks, like, oh, you did that, you did like, that jump? Up, yeah, I've had I that I felt happen. the needle go, eh, 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 and he goes, oh, I'm sorry, man. You'll, you'll be fine here in a little bit. You'll, you'll get Set, it. You'll settle in. You'll settle in, and I did not settle in for like seven hours. And then every time he would go over, like, I have, like, some spots in my back that are just, like, from tattooing, you know, just, like, shitty spots. Yeah. And uh, every time they would go over, like, a vertebrae that kind of bothers me, I almost get, like, a panic attack. 
Like, oh, because you were anticipating. Yeah, I'm just like, oh my god. You're like, this is gonna happen or whatever. Yeah, it's Damn. horrible. And then, uh, like, <laughs> one of our guys, Chio, that works here, I was like, hey, can you like work on a little spot on my back? And I thought, oh, it's just like the kidney. I'm gonna be laying down. This is gonna be a breeze. He starts in on this thing, and I'm like, oh my god, this is like the worst. And I was moving, which I hate. I hate that I moved. That's like such a bad thing for me to do. Yeah, because you know what it's I like. I know, and I yeah. feel like bad about it. And uh, there was one point where <laughs> he lined me, and I must have like moved so much that he was like, ooh. And I'm like, that didn't help it either. That just made it worse, because oh. now I know I definitely like jumped really hard. And uh, so we get done, and I'm like, man, I, I can't really take anymore. We're done for this spot, right? He's like, yeah. I'm like, how long was that? Was that like? Two and a half, three hours? He goes, that was 45 minutes. Oh. It was like four hours in my mind. Oh my God. Yeah, so I know about the back. It's definitely... Dude, There's dude. nothing you can do either because you're like splayed out. Yep. I still think stomach and chest hurts worse. Um, yeah, there's parts though. Like I got like right under like my like pubic area done and I thought that was going to be bad. Like my underbelly. And it wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. Really? Um, it's also the artist, man. Like, there's definitely people that just, they just hurt no matter what. Yeah, you're really light-handed. I know More people like that, like, they could make, like, your forearm just unbearable, you know? And it's like, yeah. why is that necessary? Yeah. It's not. Just because they want to, like, get it in there. I don't, I don't understand that whole thing either. Like, pounding it in. There's a way to... Yeah, I mean, you can... You can kind of like... You guys you know, know how to apply. I mean, you... It's part of it, you know? You can make... I know people that they make the tattoo hard because they just dry wipe the whole time. And I'm just like, dude, come on, man. Like, put some green soap on that for that poor yeah. guy. Yeah. Like, there's no reason to make him go through this. Come You're on. a blotter. Blotters are the best. Yeah, totally. Blot me. Just like a little here, a little there. Yeah. Put as long as I'm not like there. dripping blood, just leave it alone, please. That's the other thing. I see some people will tattoo and they'll like be doing like a big piece and like there's just like blood dripping and they're just like letting it be yeah. there. And I'm like, man, come on, man, clean it up. That's so weird. I'm like, I know it looks cool in a picture to you, but. Are some people way bloodier than others? Like. I think a little, I think definitely there's, there's people I know that I've tattooed and I know that they're gonna bleed a little more than most people. But honestly, with the way that I tattoo, I don't really have a lot of people it's just kind of like this. It's like a little plasma and that's yeah. it. And I try and like really be as nice to the skin as I possibly can. So they heal well, you know? Yeah. So like, I don't really have much of that, but I definitely have had people come in and like, you know, they partied really hard the night before. Like, like they're not normally people that drink. Cause like, if you're the type of person that has some beers at the end of the day, it's not gonna affect you getting tattooed. No. But if you're like, you know, some college kid that doesn't go out and drink like 40 shots, drinks, yeah. Then it definitely happens. And so like, you get this little puddle that I have with the ink that I'm trying to work into your skin, but the skin starts bleeding so quickly, it kind of mixes with the puddle of ink. So it, I'm kind of like putting the ink in, but the ink is becoming like, Plasmy. It's just like, yeah, it's like 70% actual ink now and 60% actual ink now. It just keeps going down on the ratios. So it makes it hard to pack in like, you know, like a nice color piece. You kind of like sit there and you try and pack it in, you wipe it and it's kind of like barely there. Especially if it's a light color too. I always see that when people are putting like yellow in or something like yellow that. Yellow always looks like orange. Because of the blood. And then like you give it a little bit and it, and it goes to what it is. Also, there's times where I know people will use like you know, like a, a light color and then use a dark color. Like if I did like a field of yellow here and then I started doing black and wipe into it and the yellow kind of gets like dirty looking. Oh yeah. And then when it heals, the scab comes off and it's fine. But it just like, it kind of gives you a panic attack. You're like, that's not the color I made that. You know? So weird. Dude, this, it's like black magic. It's like, there's so much voodoo to tattooing that like you can scientifically do anything you want and scientifically make machines to be better and have engineers work on it. but. You meet some older tattooers and like, I met this guy that was like a, a biker guy when I first started and he did like white ink on like, he did like the like Indians with headdresses and like classic like biker stuff. Cool shit. Yeah, and the beads would be like perfectly white. And I was like, how are you doing that? Like, I, I definitely don't get that from my ink. And he said, well, I microwave it. What? He, every time before he tattooed, he would take a little cap of white put it in a microwave for like, he had like, you know, he didn't tell me what it was, but like 15 seconds, you know? 
and it would just kind of like peel away the excess like liquid and make it a little chunkier. And it seemed to work weird. for Weird. I mean, maybe those How does one figure that out is the weirdest Exactly. Part. Oh, exactly. That's the other thing. How somebody like, well, I, you know, I decided I was going, I'm, I'm just going to microwave that shit, man. And, you know, totally. get that headrest going. It's kind of like when you see like certain food and you're like, who was the first person to decide to eat that? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Who looked at an egg and was like, that? That, that looks good. Perfect. I'm born baby in a, in a little shell. Unfertilized Perfect. baby. Let's eat that shit. Y'all ever Perfect. had chicken ovaries? Yeah. I want to put chicken on my chicken. <laughs> so true. Yeah, there's so many tattooers that I'm like, well, what do you do for this situation? And they say some stuff that sounds like it came out of like an occult book. You know? <laughs> like, what, you did what? Well, to get my black this way, I get a big vat and I pour it in there and I let it boil real low and slow for about two days while I have an apprentice start it. And then I pray to Satan yeah. and then I tattoo these people and it looks like this. Yeah, it looks just like this. It's a, it's a, it's an exact prayer though. Uh, I can't let you have that prayer book. <laughs> how? Uh, I was going to ask you this. How competitive do you feel like this field is? Because um, I get tattooed. I mean, I really only get tattooed by my two friends. It's kind and of I get, the way to go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think like when I started around 20 years ago and I started in the South and I started in like uh, Tennessee, um, I think like you just, we didn't know because there was no internet in the shop and you know, most of the tattoos you saw were out of like magazines and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I would look at magazines and be like, oh man, that's cool. You can do that. You can do that. And I would kind of like try and better myself by looking at that. Um, because there wasn't a lot of tattooing down there. So it was kind of like I had to like get it where I could. Right. Um, so uh, I think it's more like in big cities like this and nowadays like there is definitely competition because there's so many people opening shops and a lot of times like they may or may not have their own clientele. So you sometimes oh, you get shops that right. like will try and undercut people just to take the business. And then sometimes you have people that you know they have all their own business and they don't really care about the next guy. So I think like, to me, it feels it's more competitive when you get to uh, like conventions and stuff because they have, they have all these like uh, contests. And so they'll so be like best color, the day, best, best yeah, color, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. and people get a little competitive, you know, which is good when it's healthy. But um, I, I've kind of found that like the better thing for me to do is to not really delve into that. It's kind of like trying to compare yourself to anybody. I'm sure like musically, you know, for you. Oh, like, it's huge you, competition. It is. But, but it's it, unspoken. That's the weirdest part is people yeah. talk about it like, you know what I mean? Yeah. In music, I feel like. But do you find it to be overtly negative or more like a positive like? Well, there's two things, right? There's, there's, there's comparison and there's competition. I think healthy competition is good for you because right. it pushes you, right? Obviously. But comparison will fuck you up. You're right. It will. You know what it I mean? Like your psyche up. If you look right. at yourself and you look at your career in your art, because let's face it, we're both artists, and you're like, oh, like this dude did that and he did it better than me or whatever. It sucks, dude. Yeah, you get so down on it that you don't produce the way you should. Right. Because you're looking at, you know, you're like, oh, well, it's not, it's not that. It's or your not. art becomes unoriginal because you're like, well, they did this and it worked. This yeah. band did this and sold 10,000 tickets instead of the five that we sold. You know what I mean? That's or like the thing whatever. I try and do really hard when I look at tattoos is I try to take periods where I look at a lot of people's work and i like, oh, I really like that and I like this and I like what's happening. And then I also have periods oh where I try not to. Yeah. Because I feel like if I'm just looking at people's tattoos all day, subconsciously, I'm going to do one. For sure. I'm going to like do something, not even meaning to, yeah, that wouldn't have been my normal choice. It's just because now I've like I've I've witnessed it enough. It's hard, man. Being an artist is it's it's a lot more difficult than you thought when you got into it. And know? most guys that I talk to that are successful, you know, and not being stupid, but us included, it's like you just put your head down and do your shit. Yeah. Like, there's a point for that. There's a point for like exploring. There's a point for execution. Right. And I think that that's a that's a huge thing. It's that's like, so cool, by the way. Yeah, I love, I love so, like the thickness of it too. It's really thick. Are you just using like a 14? Uh, I took a nine and I opened it up with a lighter, so it's like like a shader basically. Yeah. That's awesome. 
Yeah, I love doing stuff like this. I actually don't get to do a lot of stuff like this sometimes. Well, I was just gonna, I was just gonna send, when they asked me, you know, when the network was, or when Revolver's like, what do you want? I was like, I sent our assistant a Sailor Jerry piece. Um, like the skull with the hat on, you know? Oh, I've got that one. I yeah. Think. yeah. And then I was like, I was like, I just got a cowgirl and Joel, my son Joel asked me where the cowboy was. Oh. And I was like, why don't you draw one, buddy? That's great. And so he, he drew it the other day, and his mom sent me a picture. That's cool. Like, that's, I, I like how he had participation in yeah. it, you yeah. know? He's going to be like 35 one day and still be like, I love that. You know, like, oh, it's yeah. still going to be something cool to oh, him. Yeah. It's my favorite tattoo, by the way, I've ever had. Like this one, which is so silly, but awesome. this is the, my no, favorite tattoo. Awesome. Ever. And, and just this scenario, because you're a southerner and you get it. To you really get where cool. I come from, and where'd you uh, come from originally? My family's from Tennessee and Georgia. Where, uh, where in Tennessee? Chattanooga. I'm from Johnson City. Yeah, my drum tech's from Johnson City, and then I grew up. Uh, I grew up in Florida. Oh, yeah, that's a likely story. I've heard that a lot. Yeah. people like from there and they bounce down and they you yeah. know, bounce up. <laughs> yeah, I live in Utah now though. Actually, I, uh, you're saying how's uh, how do you like Salt Lake City? I really like it. Um, There's a really like when I went out there like. I'm talking like eight years ago. Yeah. Like a lot of like the um the like next generation of Mormon kids are super into like hardcore and stuff like that. Like oh yeah. They're super yes. into it. Specifically like straight edge stuff. Too. I live down downtown right now, but I just got five acres and I'm actually building a house on it now. It's awesome. I love the weather there. Like you could be in shorts like you are now, and there'd be like you know like two feet of snow, and it it's just not cold. Matter. Yeah, yep. it's so awesome. People don't people don't realize it's not cold. Like, it's not bad at it's all. It's not cold. Yeah, I love being there. And half of the tattooers that were with me, they went immediately to Colorado because of the snowboarding. And I tried oh, to snowboard no. once, and it I like out here, like in Jersey, and I totally wrecked and I hurt myself. And then I noticed the snow was so different there that I was like, oh, I should have like tried it out here. The license plates literally say best snow on earth. It is. It's so fluffy. Yeah, man. I don't do it either. I, well, I played drums. You hurt yourself in B.O. I played drums for that band Paramore for a while when Under Oath, <laughs> Under Oath broke up for a while. And so I played, and they're a big pop band, they do the garden and shit. And I had a contract where I wasn't allowed to go because if you break your wrist, you know, right. they're making all this, they're making a higher dollar ticket of price than we are. Right. Yeah, you're fucking with their wallet when that happens. Yeah, so I didn't <laughs> do it. And then I just stopped doing it. I stopped skateboarding because uh, when I was apprenticing, I was like, oh, I'd go out in the parking lot and skate for a bit. And the guy that taught me was like, mm, you probably don't want to do that. And I'm like, why not? And he's like, well, if you fall and you break your wrist, you're, you're done. Fucked. And he's like, that's even if you heal well, eventually, he was like, it's going to hurt the rest of your life. And you're going to be out of work for what? You know, like six, seven weeks. Can you afford that? And I'm like, you know what? I'll let the uh, I'll watch some skateboarding on TV and be just four, as four one one bro yeah VM. totally just be like ah oh, get some of those videos and I'll be totally fine and uh, I follow on Instagram uh, Hall of Meat and Hall of Meat is the thrasher like the one where they wreck yeah. so I see it and I'm like yeah cool I made the right decision be like somebody's bone hanging out of their arm mm. and I'm like oh god thank God that's not me just a couple years ago there I don't know I remember the guy's name there's a basketball player that jumped up and came down and his shin came out of his did on you, TV? Yeah, did you see that? Oh, no, I didn't. I'm going to have to look that yeah, up. Yeah, I'm going to find it right now. I don't know why I love that shit, but... <laughs> I do too. It's fucking It just gross. keeps you grounded. You're like, oh, yeah, I'm not... We used to... There used to be that arcade game, Top Skater. Oh, had yeah, the skateboard. Dude. dude, I'd get on there. i get so hyped, I'd go in the parking lot and hurt myself because I thought I could skate better than I could. That thing's tight as fuck, dude. Already, there we go. I'm gonna walk around with it before I put that stuff yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, totally. Right? Yeah, yeah. Walk you, around. We clean it for me before we leave. Yep, sure will. There it is. Joel Gillespie. Kind of reminds me of those old like uh, Don Quixote drawings. Oh yeah. That's what I love about it. Oh, my foot is all the way asleep. Oh yeah, don't. Uh... All the way asleep. We're under us. Oh yeah. Thank you so much for having us. East Side Inc. Josh, Josh. you the man. Good right. to have you guys. Thanks to Orman. Yeah, thanks, thanks. Yeah. We're definitely thank coming you. back here. And thank thanks you Revolver. to Revolver yeah. for getting us all together. And please come on down to East Side Inc. Do it. And see these guys in concert. Yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs>